Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with an update on potential Tropical Cyclone 9 for Monday, September the 23rd, 2024. So to start off the video, here's a look at the true color visible satellite imagery provided by the College of Dew page. And this is a look at the Northwestern Caribbean on the imagery on potential Tropical Cyclone 9. And we can see that the system has evolved pretty rapidly since yesterday, how the system is beginning to show signs of organization this afternoon. And what I mean by organization is we're starting to get more persistent, deeper convection. So we have a little bit of deeper or some pretty thick, deep convection happening to the southeast of the low level center, which is right here. And we're already starting to see these organizing bands and more density to them. They're starting to wrap almost on the upshear side of the system. So right now this does, while it does look a little bit anemic on the satellite imagery perspective within this broader envelope of spin, this is what we're looking at. There is semblance that this is gonna probably get pretty tight because we have all this deeper convection. And once we get these two centers to align better, we're probably gonna see a more rapid pace of strengthening and organization, which should happen fairly soon. Now I do have some good news. We do have an Air Force 309 mission C-130 aircraft that is flying through PTC-9 this afternoon. And what they have found in their incoming pass is winds generally 10 to 15 knots or about 15 to almost 20 miles an hour. So winds are light on the northwestern flank of the system. However, the strongest winds are happening underneath this deeper convection, so mired underneath. And what we're seeing is winds that are anywhere between 34 to 45 knots, which is deemed tropical storm strength, but the lack of um, convection and organization still on the northwestern side does not allow this to be designated as a tropical depression or tropical storm just yet. But that could happen as early as this evening or by tonight, given the organization status that we're seeing. And the recon mission is making their second pass through the system as we speak. And if there's time, we will bring you that information. Now the big question mark really remains and is foreseen is how strong will potential Tropical Cyclone 9 slash Hurricane Helene get? Because at this point, we do know that this will be a hurricane, possibly a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. But exactly how strong this gets really is a bit uncertain. And there's a lot of wrinkles in the forecast. One of those is, of course, the positioning. And secondly, there is a little bit of reminiscent of southwesterly shear that is imparting on the system. If we actually go back and look at the satellite imagery, you can actually see some of these cirrus cloud filaments. These are actually animating out of the southwesterly direction. So there is a touch of southwesterly shear of about 10 to 15, maybe close to 20 knots on the system, which is leading to this asymmetry to the system, but also it's in its formative stage. So at the moment, there's a little bit of wrinkles in the short term, but at once this consolidates, it could happen in, in a hurry. And so looking at the halves A, this is kind of the halves group. We'll show you the halves B as well, sticking to hurricane models in this video. And looking at this, by this afternoon, pressure down to 1,000 millibars, Probably not going to be there given that it's at 1004, but hey, I'm not surprised with the organization that we are seeing in a quick earnest this afternoon. This could be believable with pressure down about 1000 to 1004 millibars. Once this gets into the Yucatan, and actually we're going to zoom closely on this um, briefly, we can see that this does make a run for hurricane intensity, which isn't surprising based on the NHC that I'm about to show you. 48 hours, 48 hours, that's two days left in the Caribbean before it makes its journey into the Gulf of Mexico and does show that a fairly compact, robust circulation is going to be in place here. And if we look at the previous run, 966, and in this run, it's a little deeper and actually not as deep as last 900 run, but wait until you see this. So as we go forward, so by the way, for reference, this is Western Cuba. This is the Yucatan Peninsula. The Yucatan Channel is right in here. So the system has a lot of water time, unscathed landmass interaction. So that's going to allow the system to really bundle up pretty quickly. And the question is, how quick will it take full advantage with this? 
On the halves A uh, in 60 hours, wants us down to a 925 millibar system. This would be a very scary scenario. This would be a Category 4 hurricane at this point uh, based on the pressure gradient and wind field and very symmetrical. Pay close attention to that. Very symmetrical wind field, which means not a whole lot of wind shear to kind of uh, slosh or whisk away that wind on the far eastern side, right? So this is a really compact system. By hour 72, it really gets deep. This is very alarming on the halves A, and wait until I show you the halves B as well. It explicitly shows a Category 5 hurricane at this point. But again, there's, again, due to the uncertainty initially right now, this really remains to be seen. But uh, for one thing, for sure a hurricane in the Gulf at some sorts here, anywhere between a 75 to 110 mile an hour hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, and then could be very intense, holding on to that 900, 899 millibar system as it approaches the Big Bend. Now, of course, models are just forecasts and guidance, and we don't know exactly if this is going to actually pan out. But it is worth taking note of. If we look at prior model runs, 900 millibars on the pri previous run had 925, and on the run before that, which is actually a little faster, showed this making landfall at about 926, 925 millibars. So for one thing, consistency here is calling for this to become a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, at least on this run. Now taking a look at the halves B model, showing us a very compact inner core, still thinks it's going to form. These models have proven really well, good track history on these, and showing us that this becomes a 9 or an 889 millibar. That's a 160 knot system. That would be a catastrophic, cataclysmic, apocalyptic kind of system, and then it gets even lower by a, a, a millibar here, um, 888 millibars. That's exceptionally concerning, very concerning, and then it makes landfall here at about 910, 909, maybe 919 millibars. And again, a uh, very compact nature here. This is something that is going to be taken into consideration, I'm sure, with the NHC because both of these models show explosive intensification. Now, a couple of other models that I wanted to show you too is the H Wharf. I'm just going to back it up for a few frames here and just show this is even showing a 930, but does not show the winds very well. Probably an eyewall replacement cycle is being simulated here, which are hard to predict. But in general, pressure down to 930 millibars. This would be a major hurricane, a Cat 3, Cat 4 hurricane in the northeastern Gulf. Looking at the HMON model, also something quite similar, 918 millibars uh, once it approaches the Big Bend. So as far as I could tell, um, this could theoretically end up being a fairly significant major hurricane approaching the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, possibly uh, even into the Gulf of Mexico in itself. Something um, that we will have to watch in later updates or later model runs. Um, this is the 12Z runs, so that's very important. But a recon aircraft is flying into the system, and the that data will be fed into these um, 18Z runs and will give us a better picture. Maybe we'll see downtrends in this. But as far as I can tell, pretty alarming. The upper-level environment looks also very conducive. If we look at the 200 millibar flow, you can see this anticyclonic barotropic ridge that is over the area, so not much shear to contend with. If any shear does impact the system, it might do so in the next, say, 18 to 24 hours. This westerly shear coming off of Hurricane John, which is rapidly intensifying in the eastern Pacific, going to bring 30 inches plus of rain near Tehuantepec, uh, Mexico. That's going to actually lead to some outflow resonating from that system and might natively impact the system only for a little bit. But once the system approaches the Yucatan Channel, this outflow, uh, it leaves this belt of westerly flow and it, it finds itself in a much better optimal environment with this trough approaching from the top side of the screen. Nice good outflow, this jet streak exhausting the system out. This is a very impressive configuration that allows rapid intensification in such a way we saw this with Michael, we saw this with Ian. Ian tapped in its outflow, got ingested into 
um, this jet streak with a trough, and the system surprisingly went cat five because of that. So it's not surprising that this could actually happen. Very uniform uh, barrel clinic jet here to the north with this outflow. So this is why models are going really crazy and concerning on this. Now, while there is some speculation and some uncertainties on how strong this could actually get, one thing that is for certain is this going to be moving over some very high upper ocean heat content in the northwestern Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. You can see the loop current right here. We talked about that in yesterday's video. This is octane fuel for this system with upper level um, barrel clinic flow to the north, exhausting that heat away from the hurricane. This is pretty favorable for explosive intensification once this gets into the Gulf of Mexico, especially encounters this loop current could be a very serious situation. And that's probably one of the reasons why both the halves A and B models um, show explosive intensification in and throughout the loop current. And this is pretty anomalous upper ocean heat content for this portion of the Gulf of Mexico, well above normal for this time of the year. And upper ocean heat content is about how much heat is being stored in the ocean, not just at the surface, but also far in depth down below the surface. So this is basically what's going to happen is if we get a major hurricane, it's going to um, grab, it's going to suck all that heat out of the ocean. And when you have deeper heat content, that that there's not much cold water upwelling. And this system is going to be moving at a good pace to not really churn up the water very much. Even so, it's a Cat 3, Cat 4, or Cat 5, because this is going to be kind of slingshotting in towards... Um, the western or even um, central portions of Florida near Tampa Bay, perhaps. There's a risk for that to still happen. Sea surface temperatures are not a problem with this. We're looking at mid 80s, upper 80s. We looked at this on windy.com last night and showed you all that upper or sea surface temperatures um, in the southeastern, eastern, our southern Gulf of Mexico, including the Yucatan Channel, are running at about 87 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than warm enough to support explosive intensification with this. So we really have to watch this. Does this take full advantage and become one of those big, big storms of the season, or does it not? That remains to be seen, but all you need to know is a hurricane is coming. We're very confident about that. And all preparations need to be um, get, or all preparations need to be um, getting underway, as this only has another three or four days before it makes landfall in Florida Panhandle. Sea surface temperature anomalies also well above average. You can see here anywhere between about one to two degrees Celsius. So not a problem with this system at all. All sea surface temperatures, as far as I can tell, are well optimal and favorable for this system. Now, looking at potential tropical cyclone 9, our intensity spaghetti plot here showing you the potential outcome of how strong what the ceiling is of the system. And there's a wide range of possibilities here. Anything from a mid-grade tropical storm, which again would get named, that would be Helene on the list of names for this hurricane season to as high as a Category 4 hurricane, maybe even a Category 5 here, with a couple of models that have A and B explicitly showing a wind speed max of 140 knots. Based on this, I am predicting a major hurricane here. And the black line, the black line is my intensity forecast. And I am calling for this to become a 115 mile an hour hurricane. I am definitely not as aggressive as these other models until we get more data in, but I do show a major hurricane developing in the Eastern Gulf of Mexico within the next two to three days. Now, also looking at our potential tracks here from the GEFS Ensemble, this is a blend of range of possible outcomes. All 31 different members that run the operational GFS does show us that the pressure here will fall pretty dramatically. Most of the members here showing pressures 940, 950 millibars. That's a major hurricane, even on the GFS, GEFS ensemble. So anywhere, um, say in Panama, Pensacola, Florida, and the Big Bend, really need to be watching this. This could be a very life-threatening situation. And all my hearts and thoughts and prayers do go out to all those people that are in the path here. And even in Tampa Bay, Florida, I would not stop preparing for this system because if this makes a surprising turn and gets really close, and even if the center does not pass over or directly over Tampa Bay, Florida, a Category 5 or
or a category three hurricane major hurricane rather you like it or not um the wind field is going to be fairly modest so not too small not too big but big enough to where you could still get significant tropical storm force or near hurricane force winds over tampa bay florida if this wanted to make a turn that tight turn and end it up in the tampa bay versus the majority of the ensembles have this aiming towards western panhandle of florida now this is the official forecast from the national hurricane center showing winds now of 30 miles an hour potential tropical cyclone 9 so this is not designated as a tropical storm or a tropical depression a potential tropical cyclone 9 is issued when there is unusually high confidence usually at 100 percent chance that this will become a tropical storm or hurricane within the next 24 to 36 even 48 hours and that seems to be happening on this forecast as of the two o'clock advisory hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings are now issued for western cuba the island of youth and the easternmost tip there of the yucatan peninsula in mexico all preparations here need to be rushed to completion as this is going to quickly organize and strengthen. Remember, we're not talking about a major hurricane throughout the Yucatan Channel, but it will be in its a rapid organization state. So right now, hurricane watches and tropical storm warnings are now being issued. And then additional watches and warnings will be needed in days to come over the Big Bend of Florida. And again, take note that the cone of uncertainty still is over Tampa Bay, St. Pete in um, Florida versus all the way over here in the westernmost end of the panhandle of Florida, still showing that cone of uncertainty. But right now, the Big Bend really needs to be taking um, precautions and needs to get prepared for something very significant, possibly um, life-threatening at this point. I'm not going to show you all the key messages. I'll save that for tonight's live stream, but you can see the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds are as follows. So there is certainly a likelihood that tropical storm force winds at this given time will arrive as early as Thursday morning at 8 in the morning local time eastern daylight time with a 70 to almost 80 percent chance um tampa bay st pete florida needs to really be watching the trends on this there's a 50 to 60 percent chance of tropical storm force winds and again it's this area that i'm really concerned about for catastrophic or life-threatening impacts especially that we could be dealing with something bigger than what the nhc is showing right now in its official forecast Rainfall totals are looking pretty significant with this as well. We're looking at over a foot of rain, over a foot. That's 12 inches of rain over Western Cuba and also the Island of Youth. The Cayman Islands looking at 10 plus, maybe a foot of rainfall over these small islands. So even so, this is a tropical depression or a tropical storm, there will be significant rainfall impacts over the Cayman Islands, including these other islands to its east, um, the sister islands, I call them, with a four to six inch range of rainfall. And then Cozumel, seeing about two to four inches of rainfall is anticipated. Now, we don't have the map yet for Florida. We will give you that tonight when I do go live at around eight o'clock or even 8.15 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time because this is really, really serious. Well, anyways, if you found this video very helpful and detailed, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button right now to the channel. So again, hit the subscribe button if you all are new and you like the detailed updates and content on this tropical system and also all this other information with live streams. Hit the like button and share this video with their family and friends on social media. We really got to get this out to a lot of people because this is quickly evolving. And like I said, this could have a high ceiling of a Cat 4 or even a Category 5 hurricane in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. As always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you back here tonight at around 8 or 8.15 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time with a live update on PTC 9.